All right, everybody, welcome back to Sky Watchers Radio. We have our guest, Mr. Brent Holland. Brent, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I have to tell you, it's a real treat and a real pleasure. I wish it was on better circumstances, though. What a bummer. Uh, we you know, lost agreed. one of the great ones. You know, when I, when I booked you, you know, when I booked you last week, I was like, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Brenton's going to be on. He's such a great guest. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then Dr. Roger Lear passes away. And I'm like, bummer. Now that my whole week is ruined. Yeah, you know, and you're quite right. You were saying in the in the first part of the hour that I guess we're at that stage now when we're starting to lose a lot of the legends. I noticed Correct, that. Yeah. In the, you know, I do a lot of the Kennedy assassination thing, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And... You know, just recently we've lost uh, James Tagg, who was an inadvertently responsible for the magic bullet. He was the third person hit in Dealey Plaza that day besides Governor Connolly and the president. And uh, because of him, the Warren Commission had to run back and scrap their first report and invent this magic bullet because now they had four wounds that they had to account for with only three bullets. So we just lost him. What a shame. And Ted mm. Sorensen passed away a few years ago. Uh, he was JFK's speechwriter, my friend. And, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, uh, I had um, uh, Stan Friedman on the show, and everybody knows Stan. God love him. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. good people. And he was saying, you know, it's a rush to the, uh, to the graveyard because a lot of these first-person witnesses are starting to pass away now. Mm-hmm. And it's so, just so tragic, you know. We grow up thinking that they're never going to get old, they're never going to leave us, <laughs> yeah. and we'll have them forever. And gee whiz, life is uh, fleeting at best, isn't it, guys? Oh, uh, it's it's incredible, you know. And of course, uh, not to forget uh, Jesse Marcel Jr. who passed away again, absolutely, yeah, that long ago. And yeah. you know, it's it's funny, Brent, looking at some of these people that are you know passed away, and and looking at the. You know what's left of ufology? There really uh, doesn't seem to be anybody, or you, not even just ufology, but you can count the paranormal, conspiracy, uh, across the board. Anything that deals with these kind of subjects that we talk about on this show and other shows like ours. Um, you know, th- you know the the faces uh, that are coming forward are not really at, to the same level in some sense. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but uh, for example, like we were saying earlier, we don't know who the next Roger Lear is. I mean, it, who's going to be that next pioneer? Who's going to take you know that mantle and and run with it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I know I could I could say this. I'd nominate Jesse Marcel the third for ufology to continue that work. I mean, oh, he's, he's well great. spoken guy, and he's yeah, fluent, great. and he he's up to date on everything. He might not be a bad person to pass the torch to, yeah. but you know, who's out there that we don't know about? You know, that we should know about. That's the real question. Maybe I, someone from the ranks is going to rise up unexpectedly. Let's hope. But who are in the ranks now? That's the real question. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now the one person uh, that I, and one of the people that I respect the most, I got to say, in ufology is obviously Stephen Bassett. So if I want to say anybody deserves to have, uh, you know, people back him up right now with the work he's doing is Steve Bassett. And obviously Jose Escamilla and the stuff that he's doing also, it's just amazing work. But uh, yeah, I mean, who's going to be that next person? Because we're not all going to be around forever. And this begs the question uh, if the government stays silent enough, for a long period, and a lot of these folks, you know, do pass away. How long will it be until the population just doesn't care anymore? I don't know if that'll ever happen because um, there's so many great shows like your own that cover this topic, and they cover it very, very well. There's so much interest on the internet; it's played a key role in keeping these things alive. And you know, with the advent of of cell phones, every cell phone has a telephone. It has also something called a camera in it with incredible resolution that I'm embarrassed to say even five years ago, it's better than my handheld camera. And getting yeah. better by yeah. the day. Hold on, right. hold on, hold on, hold on. Great resolution, yeah. great resolution doesn't mean it's light sensitive enough to catch what's flying in the sky at night. That's true. No, that's a very good point, actually. That's a very valid point. But I'll tell you what, we're not that far off. Uh, you know, the, no, the really Galaxy... Aren't. G5 is coming out now with, what is it, 16 megapixel? And yeah, but it still doesn't have night incredible. vision. incredible. Well, no, it doesn't. You can get an app for that, though. Uh, yeah, but the app needs to have, yeah, the app doesn't work. Maybe for the first three feet in front of you, but nothing more than that. Come on. Well, you know? that might be true. And, and those night vision apps, all they do is paint the screen you're looking at green. They yeah, even you know have what? a thermal I'll, one, too, that makes a, 
anything moving look like it's got a, a temperature signature. You know, there's I don't think we're I don't think we're that far off though, Alan. Really, from having that right in the palm of our hands on smartphones. It, it would be nice, but I don't think it's going to be cost effective just yet. Trust me. Uh, can you imagine what would happen if people had night vision cameras on their phones? Oh man. Okay. Not just on the ufology side, but you it's know, everything. there's. Yeah, for everything. We'll just leave it at that. It's, you know, just like just like we need now more surveillance. You know, it, what is it? Facebook now. The new Facebook app gives you per, gives Facebook the permission, whether you acknowledge it or not, to turn your microphone or camera on whenever they choose to or want to. Is really? that right? Yep. Yeah. The, the new app that you download, the new update, uh, has that in its terms of service. Yep. All right. Just give me a second. I'm gonna go put a pair of pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to warn the audience listening and you guys too don't be too judgmental if you're getting a visual right now remember I'm in Canada Canada's cold that's all I'm going to say Speaking Canadian which, bacon <laughs> Canadian bacon so, I was thinking so, more of shrinkage anyways yeah, I was going to say <laughs> pre-cooked or cooked <laughs> pre-cooked or cooked bacon it's not even a sausage. It's like you flattened it bacon with bacon bits. Bacon bits. Oh god, that's just that's just wrong. But no, actually, that, that did want yeah. me to bring up a topic here. I don't know Please. if anybody here saw it or not. Uh, has anybody heard about this new Ukraine video that showed up, where they actually videotaped on March sixth of twenty fourteen, uh, possibly a large cigar shaped flying saucer in the Ukraine near Chernobyl. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I I posted over a link to it earlier. And funny as it is, where I found it was a very reputable source, the Huffington Post. They're very reputable. Yeah, it's not like the, the sun. No. Yeah. Wow, this is interesting. Yeah, I will take a look at Brent, that. Brent, I don't know if you could see that link or not. I yes, just I can. put it I up. Just, uh... And I don't know if, Angel, you want to actually uh, put that up on the website uh, and in the chat room for people to look at. But I was a little bit on the amazed side with it. Um, it That's does, very good. Yeah, it's a good find, man. It, it, it does not look like smoke and mirrors when I usually call on a UFO scene bat squatch, um, <laughs> which if, Brent, you've heard our show once or twice before, you'll understand where that comes from. Um, <laughs> yeah, instead of bat uh, <clears throat> No, 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 no. There was a gentleman uh, who was on the show with us a couple of months back. I'm not trying to beat him up for it, but instead of there being a Sasquatch, (laughs) um, he was telling us about uh, a... a, a It's another phenomenon called Bat Squatch. Right, Bat Squatch. But he was telling me the wings are only 10 feet in length. And And it has the head of a bat. And it has the head of a bat. And with That's the coolest thing ever. It sounds cool, but he's telling us that it can fly. And I called, I don't believe it, because the weight of something the size of a Sasquatch needs to have a larger wingspan to be able to lift it up in the air. Wow. So that's why I call it Bat Squatch. Bat Squatch. That sounds like a good description for it. Do you think it could be a hybrid of something? Um, I, I don't seems know. There to be a lot of hybrids emerging right now. That's why I'm just curious. Well, oh, you know. And, I, and I'm curious with hybrids. Maybe you guys could clarify some of this i'm wondering if it's just your average animal species trying to survive and if there's not enough in the in the community if you will to mate with they have to look outside outside their species yeah Hmm. maybe just to self uh survive i don't know what do you guys think interesting but i would think possibility it's a a possibility but i would bring up the question as being not the bad cop on the show. By the way, we we did find a picture for Bat Squatch, and I just linked it to you here on Skype, uh, Brent. I want you to look at that real quick. Uh, it's just an amazing description of the uh, <laughs> Is that the, my photo that I found? Yeah, it's an amazing <laughs> picture. I'm going to post it over on Facebook, everybody. Facebook.com forward slash Skywatchers Radio. Uh, the Bat Wait Squatch image. Now. I recognize, I'm sure I dated his sister at one point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you probably did. He is from the south, I hear, this bat squatch. <laughs> uh, well, well, I'm not going to say nothing because, uh, yeah. <laughs> but jumping Do I back... hear a banjo? No. No, okay. no, no, no. 
Then there's some mice, mighty pretty lips there. Um, <laughs> Past the moonshine. Oh, Wait, boy, we're going off topic. Are you okay? <laughs> no kidding. All right, exactly. But if anybody wants to see what's making us laugh so much, go to our Facebook uh, page and you'll check it out and there. And by the Bat-squatch. way, call in if anybody has sighted a bat squatch, please. Oh, please do that. Uh, please, I'd please, love please, to hear uh, from please. you. I, I, yeah, we really need that. Um, but, Brent, what uh, yeah. about the hybrid thing, you know, as the – not the debunker, but the more analytical person, or not the bad cop, but the guy, the number cruncher guy. My no, question, no, 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 bad cop. You, you got to okay, write the fine. first time. Okay, okay, fine. Call me the bad cop. Just say it right. My yeah. question about that would be is sure. because pheromones play a really significant role in mating rituals in animals. Right. How would the pheromone difference and attractant let one animal get near the other? If they're interbreeding. Well, I can only speak for Canada because uh, anything goes in Canada, as you know. We have oh, gay yeah, I saw that here. video. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Well, there's uh, no, you know, so gay that's the only... fine. You know, they yeah. should, everybody should be able to suffer like anybody else. That's right. Suffer right. when they get married. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, coming from a heterosexual background, there could be many advantages. You know, you could actually go to sleep after and um, watch hmm. the game together. And not argue. And those people are happy, man. They have like parades, like they march and like they, they get all happy and they. Dress oh, you ever up been in one? They're fun. They're a, they're a blast. Everybody I've never been in one, but I tell you what, I, I love parades. I mean, there you go, dude. You got, they must be doing something right. I don't go know. down to Key West to Fantasy Fest, and the stuff you'll see will be really, really entertaining to say the least for you. Go oh, for it, man. Well, I'm awesome. not that far out from there, actually. I'm, That's what I'm saying. You can make the trip. Happy. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to make that trip. But. You know, the reason why I bring this up, because you guys had mentioned Bigfoot before, and, you know, I've done a few shows on Bigfoot. But there's another anomaly that has come to my attention. I did a show um, on, I guess, I, I tend to call it a werewolf, but it's certainly not a werewolf, folks, in, in the Hollywood sense. It's a creature that stands upright that looks like a wolf. And I'm wondering where these creatures are coming from because this isn't just, it's like UFOs, right? It's not just one or two people that have had maybe too many beers or something and they're up at right. the cottage, right? I mean, these these people, uh, they're oh, that's encroaching right. on small I cities. I keep on forgetting Canada on doesn't have cabins. You guys have cottages, right? Cottages, yeah. Okay. Uh, or cabins, or whatever you want to call them. But, you, you know, you get the idea. Like, they're encroaching more and more also. Uncivilized areas on what I would call well in Canada. There's a lot of uncivilized people here. <laughs> well, what do you what do you think the possibilities are, uh, Brent? That uh, yeah. drugs are just getting better and better, <laughs> <laughs> and more legal and more legal. Yeah, isn't yeah, that straight. You know, we fought all these years. This is the dynamic that I can't figure out. We fought like hell all these years to ban cigarettes because we knew they were bad for our lungs and the kids and stuff. You know, you don't want your kids smoking. Well, hold on, hold right. on. It's not the sure, tobacco. Ahead, it's all the chemicals that they're putting in. It's yeah, the, every, it's, it's not the tobacco yeah. that's bad. It's the chemicals. There's over a hundred and seventy-two different cancerous causing chemicals that are embedded in ta- in That's tobacco yeah. that that are cigarettes it's not it, the tobacco it's it's like they're like they're telling you smoke this we're trying to kill you well yeah. the whole thing is is they put in all the preservatives because they had to stay in the machines for so long right you know that's it's all the preservatives you know, it's and all that scary other stuff. though Alan and Brent, it's scary when you think about everything around us is you know, has cancer causing properties in it. Uh, there's a report that came out not long ago about McDonald's having uh, chemicals in their food, which have been proven to be cancer causing uh, chemicals. Oh yeah. Uh, so it, it's in our food. Right. It's in cigarettes. It, it's in everything. Sodas. I mean, you can't escape some of these chemicals. My question is, why are they using these chemicals? In our food, in our products, in shampoos, in everything. Sterility and population it? control. Exactly. That's one of the main reasons. That's exactly one of the main reasons. But what what needs to be done to get these companies to stop using these products? Well, we the people. And, uh, you know, democracies in Canada, too. Democ- I tell people all the time on my show, democracy is this precious gem. And you it have is, yeah. to be interactive. You cannot just sit back. If you don't like what's going on, you got to get up and do something about it. We have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have put their lives down so we can have that right to march and speak out against the government if we're not happy. We also have the right to run. 
and do and make the change ourselves. So um, I'm all for uh, taking action nonviolently. I'm a big fan of Dr. King's, and I remember when Dr. King was alive. Yeah, I'm an old fart, folks. But uh, <laughs> you know, the templates are there for change, and don't think one person cannot make change because they can. And I'll reference Dr. King once again. So I think that uh, you have to be very proactive in a non-violent, somewhat, uh, not to say you don't have to be antagonist, but you have to be non-violent and perform. And, well, the way they're banning guns, obviously we don't have a choice about being non-violent or not. They're taking away everybody's guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, here, and this goes to what's going on over in uh, well, Venezuela. What do you think of, of the uh, situation over there? Ukraine or Venezuela? Venezuela. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, I think Canada just pulled its ambassador, if I'm not mistaken. Um, big problems with your question. Uh, is the United States like that? I don't think so. Um, is it going to be like that? <laughs> no, I don't think ever. No, I think we the people are too entrenched. But you have to be prudent, right? Because we know governments lie, and they lie to protect themselves, and they lie to keep the people dumb. And we have to question everything, absolutely, absolutely everything. And as a student of the 60s, uh, Peace Man Groovy, you have to do that. We, you know, we were taught that. I mean, there was lies about uh, Vietnam, there was lies about JFK, we know that. There was lies about Dr. Mm-hmm. King's assassination, Bobby's as well, and yep. Malcolm X. I mean, f- four big leaders. Uh, when I uh, interviewed Ted Sorensen, um, who was my friend, I was in his Manhattan apartment. And what an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he lived in the apartment right across from where uh, John Lennon was killed. Yeah. Oh, no, you know, oh, I knew he's you were going to say that. He's yeah. in the Dakota building? What well, just next door. Oh, do I know stories about the Dakota building? Oh, well, we Brent, no this. kidding. As I'll soon, finish up as soon, quick as, soon as you were as soon as you were mentioning that the name John Lennon popped into my head like five yeah. seconds before you said it. Yeah, I that's the most you. haunted building in, in New York. Is that right? Yeah. That's what they say, yeah. That's where they film Ghostbusters too, which is pretty funny as well. Dan Aykroyd just lives up the street from me. He's a Canadian A. Eh? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> I had his dad. A on legend the show. too. He is. Speak, you know, speaking of uh, he's losses, a, he's uh, Her- UFOs Harold Ramis, also. we lost also recently. Yep. Funny as it is, isn't Dan Aykroyd into UFOs as well, too? Oh, yeah, oh, big yeah. time, dude. Yeah, I remember he had the, uh, yeah. the, the uh, vodka crystal skull that he put out. Yeah, it's really good ago. vodka, yeah. too. No, but didn't, did didn't, he do a, didn't he do a show? <laughs> didn't he do a UFO-based show at one point? He did. No, uh, he, he did a documentary. I thought he did a show, too, though. Yeah, I think he did a multi-episode show, yeah. Well, I'm not, something I'm not aware of that one. mysteries of the un. Oh, I can't remember the name of the. I know show. he did something with David Sarita. I think it was like a documentary with David Sarita. It was him uh, being interviewed by him. Yeah. They were like picking his brain, which was. He would be an interesting person <laughs> to have on this show if we could try and figure out how to arrange that to talk not about his comedy stuff, but to talk about his UFO stuff. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm He'll be I into it too. Dad on the show. I'm trying to get him on the show as well. And oh, no good. Um, I'm writing a book, and I'm trying to get Dan to write the foreword for it. On uh, it's nice. called Creepy Kingston. It's, it's, it's local ghost stories, and see, in Kingston, we have the maximum security penitentiary for all the serial killers right here, just down the street from where I live. And it scares the hell out of me to think. If anybody knocks on the door wearing orange, don't <laughs> answer it. <laughs> Can I give them your phone number instead? <laughs> Sure, go ahead. Go He's ahead. far it, enough. It, I don't it, think they'll it, get to it, him. We're in Florida. It's going to be a rough commute for him. Yeah. So maybe he'll tie <laughs> off. So that, that's what I want to do with Dan. But uh, his dad was telling me why Dan wrote Ghostbusters. And the reason being is Dan's father, when he was growing up as a little kid, witnessed his father, Dan's grandfather, doing seances right at the family farm. Um, I would say... Ten kilo- six miles north of where I'm living right now. Oh yeah, you got to do the math, don't you? Yeah, well oh, that's wow. okay. I was, <laughs> I'm right in the in. I was right at the age where they stupid Canada changed it over and and made our life miserable from um, uh, the American system or the British system, if you will, and changed everything into kilometers. So I still measure <laughs> everything by inches and feet. And everything that comes off the truck is four by eight or two by four. So this whole 
crazy metric system, that's fine. I think if we were living in Britain, in in uh, Europe, but we're in North America, guys. You know, so yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so um, didn't we find like a war to get away from them a long time ago? If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then we have this British invasion in the 60s. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> Superman is played by a British guy now. Did you guys know that? Is he really? Is he really? Who's that? Yeah, they took away Superman, man. What the hell? Superman's like, That's he's the symbol of America, and it's a British guy now. Did you know he was invented by a Canadian? Well, yeah, Park, one of the most Canadian, the yeah, other one was just a regular Jewish yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's funny stuff. Um we got off track there. Okay, I'm going to come back to Ted Sorensen. Ted Sorensen, uh, I spent the afternoon with him, and um, you know, he was saying that uh, many, many things of wisdom. And he t- he walked us through the letter he wrote to Khrushchev to get Khrushchev to back down during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And there are big lessons to be learned there because mm. we were so close. He told me that Jackie. President Kennedy's hus- uh, husband. No, I'm going to Canadian. <laughs> that would be a whole different uh, show right now. <laughs> America wasn't ready for that. <laughs> no. Now you really know why he died. It was too hard to get a Catholic in. Never mind. A gay like, guy. Hi, my name's Jackie. Oh, the man. surgery went well. <laughs> yeah. So Jackie called uh, Jack and said, I want to bring the kids home. She was in Florida at the time because uh, I want us all together. They had a swing set on the white lawn at the time for the kids. I want us all outside on the white on the White House front lawn when the bomb drops so we could all die together. That's how close we were. Wow. And imagine if the bear escalates things in the Ukraine and a line is drawn in the sand, a line that is irreversible, the same thing could happen within 24 hours. You'll have Mrs. Obama hmm. calling her husband. And in those days, 63... There was no bomb-proof, nuclear-proof uh, bunker underneath the yeah, White Yeah, there was. There was, there was Mount Weather less than uh, – not Mount Weather. What's the, what's the hotel that had the bunker underneath it that was less than 20 minutes drive? Yeah, uh, the they bombs did a- would get there in less than five minutes from Cuba. Oh, from mm. Cuba? And, yeah, yep, and yep. Castro was pushing for a first strike. He actually mm. begged. Uh, well, no, that that's impossible. You're telling me that back then uh, missiles were capable of Mach three, because it, the fastest that I've uh, my understanding was is 300 miles an hour, is the fastest missile that was out there. Even you know, well, not now, but up until the mid 80s. And if it's 300 miles an hour, uh, we're looking at maybe Atlanta within an hour. From Cuba. From Cuba. Mm, do the math okay yeah, yeah I'm, well figure i'm just telling you what ted told me well, the bombs were only five minutes away they wouldn't have time for anything any evacuation was well if away. there was a russian sub you know right off the yeah. bay yeah i believe that yeah i believe they've i believe russian subs at that point in time were were coming in and out of our territorial waters a hundred percent oh I, I, yeah both in both uh, areas yeah it was, t- it was very very tense very very, very tense, and uh, it could get that way real quick. Real, real Interestingly, quick. though, I saw uh, – I don't know if you've seen the show – what is it? Hangar 1, uh, the MUFON Files. Mm, um, their good show. first episode – oh, you finally got to see it. Good. Got to see it, yeah. Their first episode actually spoke to why Kennedy may have been assassinated because he was going to try and take the lid off the UFO situation. And yeah. that's and you beat me to it. I was going to bring that up. Do you want to talk about the memo? Yes. Yes. Sure, bring up yeah, the memo. Yeah, yeah. The, that's uh, the memo I, that got burnt, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have it on me in this computer. I wasn't prepared to talk about that. But it, do you guys do you guys want a synopsis or do you know it? Well, the, our, our listeners, and I'm under the impression based on what we're being told, the numbers are pretty nicely high tonight. And by the way, folks, please call in. Don't forget, plug in the phone oh, sure. number. Yeah, yeah. I'll answer any question. I'm not shy at all. Okay, uh, the number again is uh, 786-245-8127 for anybody who wants to call in. All right. Tell us about the memo. and tell The memo list- was addressed to the CIA, tasking the right. CIA to find out any information, um, how the Russians would, would react, essentially, uh, if they were to see UFOs in the sky. And who was, the, uh, who was running the CIA at the time? I well, love I this we- answer. I think it was uh, – was it Alan Dallas at that? Dallas? No, it was John McCain at the time. Oh, I honest. thought it was Bush. Uh, no, Bush was, it would have been a lower, 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 lower guy. 
I could have sworn they. I could have sworn they pointed out that that the first Bush, Walker Bush, was head uh, one of the heads of the CIA at the time. And he was at one point the head, one of the heads of the CIA. Right, and I think much, yeah. I was under the impression that the letter went to him. Yeah, or the Bush memo was, went to him. Bush was the head of the CIA under Reagan. Um, oh. No, wait a second, he, wait a no, second. no, he was, no, he was vice president. Of the yeah, I think he told over. <laughs> when did he take over? That was it. Was it after Colson uh, uh, during I, Carter's I administration? Know. But I know he was the head of the CIA for sure. I think it was. It could have been after during Carter. It could have been. It could yeah. not have been done during the Carter administration because he was running for vice president by then. Mm. So, uh, so I'm he thinking, ended up in charge at one point. You're right. Yes. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and I'd have yeah. to check that. To well, see. when in doubt, we could always look at Wikipedia. Yes, we, we do have this know. thing called the internet or the undernet, but as uh, as uh, George Bush Jr. calls it, the internets. True, yeah, and don't it. forget, according to Al Gore, he created it. Um, that is true. I I believe Al Gore on that. Yeah. By the way, okay. <laughs> um, but but Brent, tell us yeah. more about this memo. I find this whole thing fascinating. Well, it is fascinating. Now, there's two ways to look at it. Obviously. There's no question that there are UFOs. There's no question in anybody's mind. I, right. you know, every rational person, no matter who I talk to, there's unidentified flying objects. What the hell they are? Who knows? They're unidentified, but that's they the exist. question. Yeah, right. Uh, in many cases, they simply do not react or act in any traditional from any traditional aircraft that we have sometimes they zoom off in an opposite direction turn around on a dime and the speed the speeds are astronomical and then they're gone so what are they are they are they extraterrestrial i think in some cases absolutely in some cases they're probably drones for sure experimental aircraft that you know you certainly don't want your adversary um trying to figure out what type of technology you have. But to say we haven't been visited by those from abroad, I think would be silly. And to say we're alone in the universe, I say, God that, forbid, God yeah. forbid, we're the most intelligent beings in the universe. <laughs> well, after Brent. I started watching Cosmos last week, um, yeah. I, I, I don't think we're the, most, we're the only intelligence and the most intelligent uh, out there. If we're the only life in the cosmos, I mean, first of all, it's a tremendous waste of space. It really is, because Jesus, man, is so huge. Yes, it so is. So complete. So why are you bringing space. Jesus into this? We're talking about space. What the heck? I, I'm, I'm sorry. He's Jewish. I'm sorry. I know he's not your favorite guy, but, you know, <laughs> just oh, saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, he's, uh, I mean, it, it's besides a very, the fact. a very funny joke, if you want to hear it. Oh, Which go one? for it. I'm always for funny jokes. Well, three, uh, three Lubavitch guys. Uh, very uh, Orthodox Jews go into a, a church because it's pouring rain outside, and they sit on the right hand side. On the left hand side is a bunch of nuns. So the gate the gatekeeper comes around the uh, the guy cleaning the floor and stuff, and they ask him, "Hey, what's going on in the church?" He said, "Well, the nuns are getting married today." He said, "Why are you guys here? Because of the rain?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, "Is it okay we stay?" He says, "Well, I think so." He said, "Why is that?" He says, "Well." If they're marrying Jesus, we're on the groom's side. <laughs> That's, That's funny. Wow. Okay, I, I, that I, is I, funny. I, I got one better one. Go uh, Jesus, oh, but make it clean, man. I, okay, I, okay. To you, I got to warn. Okay. Jesus walks into a hotel. Oh, boy. Puts three nails on the counter and says, can you put me up for the night? Oh, geez, geez. Geez, that's just wrong, oh, man. Oh, thank God it wasn't Muhammad. We'd have Come uh, on, that, that was clean. Oh, man. You, you know, that was clean. Well, it was sort of clean, but that's going to upset a lot of people, man. By the way, if you want to address anybody for that, <laughs> call in. Alan call in and yell gmail. at me. Yeah, call, call in and yell at him. Call, now, call in and yell at me. Guys, have you guys yourselves, <laughs> do you have paranormal experiences? I have. Oh, tell I, us. I, I, I have. Um, I've had multiple. Oh, and by the way, I don't really? know if you saw me put the link on this. Um, I, if anybody wants to buy a stuffed alien... Uh, there is one being sold on Craigslist right now um, for a reasonable amount of money. Um, and, and by the way, this stuff, the alien, has had camera usage in the past. At one point, it was peeking through a window of somebody very famous. Oh, is you're kidding. This is the <laughs> one that, uh, what's his face used? Um, no on? names. No, <clears throat> when he no went names. on, um, the guy no who, that used to have a show on before Piers Morgan? I guess. Okay, I, I know exactly. I've had him on the show. 
That Interesting. Guy. Yeah. Isn't that, it's the same one, right? Yeah, it's a little peekaboo alien. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Peekaboo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right, Man, and that... they're stating they want cash only, and it's a whole whopping. What's the price on it right now? Five hundred bucks, and I'm near it, folks. If you want it, uh, I don't know if uh, you're going to put this up on the website or not. But if anybody wants it, I will happily make it my business to pick it up for someone if they want to, if they PayPal me the money, and I will personally ship it out after I take a couple of photos. But is that famous person going to actually sign it for us? Um, you know, I'm going to be at a convention this weekend where there's a ton of sci-fi and fantasy celebrities at. But uh, well, he's he's out on bill right now. He might be there. So well, mm. anyway, not, moving on. Okay, if anybody wants that alien, but no, me personally, I've had a couple of personal experiences, and um, I've spoken about them on the show before. I don't know if anybody really wants to hear me rant about it, uh, but uh, what I do in my spare time because of how I work and what I do for work. I have a lot of free time throughout the year. If I told you I have not been w- in my schedule right now, this past uh, six weeks, mm-hmm. I haven't had to work because I'm choosing not to work um, because of what I do for a living. Um, do you do for I have, um, I'm what they call a professional product demonstrator uh, for different products Mm -hmm. that you ever go to a home and garden show or a state fair or a car show and you have the person that's really 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 well versed about that product in the booth trying to explain to you how it works and educating you on the product but not selling it to you but educating you on the product and making you make the choice of to buy it or not yeah it works because uh at costco i usually end up buying the stuff they're selling when they have folks so like now that. everybody listening in knows why he's going to be trying to sell you something like every couple of weeks he's, you know, <laughs> so it'll be a different product he's going to be hawking on the show here well, started yeah. with speakers now the rubber alien what's next <laughs> well the rubber alien it just happens to be you know i'm scrolling through craigslist and i found it i'm like wow that's wow. pretty cool and it's four that and a half feet cool. tall um and it's not the little foam one you put in a two liter coke bottle and it grows um <laughs> Have you seen those? <laughs> have you seen those? They have them in the dollar store. They're pretty cool. You drop Way to live to the there. stereotype there, Alan. Way to live to the stereotype. Good job. <laughs> what? I, I, I'm not getting redneck on you here. I'm getting geeky. I'm getting geeky. geeky. Okay? That's okay, buddy. I'm getting geeky with it. Anyway, okay? moving on. Um, so how does so, your job as sell, not selling this stuff but explaining these things, product demonstrations, how does that connect to your paranormal experience? Really That's easy. an excellent it, question. Real easy because I only usually work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that's all I work. I usually have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays off. So the rest of the week he's, he's getting baked in a, in a locked room with no, lights no, off. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. Um, that's Same great, chance that's and, ho- and hoping he, uh, he meets some uh, spirits. No, but what I do do is because I travel to different cities, um, I try and go on, you know, see if there's any haunted properties that are around oh, or okay. there's any ghost excursions or sure. any of the guys from the TV shows like Taps or whoever. Right. Is anybody around filming or anybody doing anything? And um, I reach out and, you know, in my – in the – because I go from city to city, sometimes I drive, sometimes I fly. If I'm driving, I might actually have some equipment with me where I will actually go into a haunted property and, you know, try and record evidence. Uh, so midweek, you know, when everybody's sleeping in the middle of the night, I'm sometimes out at a haunted property or a cemetery, depending on the weather, or, you know, someplace where I'm trying to record evidence. And so I can honestly say I've had some really interesting experiences where I've caught stuff on audio, video, and photo. Absolutely, yes. Have you ever caught children in an EFP? EVP? I'm sorry. Or have you Close enough. Ever- it's it's late night, man. I understand. It's okay. Have another sip. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's. I did a show earlier, and I'm still drained from that. Um, it's it's the Canadian beer, man. No, it's not. I'm it's, just it's, a, it's like now, it's the Mackenzie boys, Canadian beer, man. Do 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 do. Did did you ever? <laughs> you know what bugs me is children. I, I just I just rips my heart open when I see a child. Um, either in some kind of manifestation, uh, half half spirit, half human, on, in a picture, or perhaps uh, more commonly in an EVP, and it just reveals yeah. part to think that this child mm-hmm. is trapped. It may not know 
that there's something better waiting for it. And I was just curious if you had ever caught any kids. Um, I've caught uh, three or four. Um, oh, I, I, I actually, the best one was um, I was on the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California, mm-hmm. um, where I was actually in the um, in the first class pool area. Sure. I don't know if you're familiar with the Queen Mary folks. Um, anybody familiar with it? Out there? Google it. Okay, Queen Google Mary. it. Yeah. Queen Mary is one. It is a nice large ship that was retired after World War II. Um, that place is so haunted; it's not funny. I, I, yeah, for a couple of different reasons. A little girl drowned in the pool. I actually <sighs> caught audio of her singing, which was really really cool. Um, I caught that EVP, but, but was, she seemed happy. And- she uh, she seemed happy. I don't know if it was a if it was a memory or a you know a, a, what they call a, re- a repetitive, yeah, a residual, a residual right. haunt, yeah, right. um, yeah, sure. Or if she was interacting because you know I caught it on audio, I didn't hear it at the time, so right. I don't know. But what really, really freaked me out was all the German screaming that I got on audio in oh, the front no cargo hold. Well, you got to understand why. Let me tell you the story of the uh, of the Queen Mary if we have the time for it. Sure, please. Uh, it'll, it'll be less than three minutes or four minutes. During World War II, besi- before World War II, it obviously was a passenger liner. So, um, okay. But in World War II, it was used as a troop transport That's to right. go back and forth yep. between the U.K. and the States. Uh, what had happened was uh, it was also carrying prisoners of war in the front cargo hold. That's right. Yeah. Now, one of do you know the story about this? The well, USS I know Curacao? part of it. I, I know uh, also that they would bring them back to Canada as well, and uh, many German soldiers stayed here afterwards. But anyways, please continue. Not a problem. Uh, during – you know, usually that big of a ship to make sure it doesn't get sunk by submarines or other ships have escort ships mm-hmm. surrounding it. And there was one particular ship called the USS Curacao, which was traveling in front of it and doing a back and forth weaving in front of like – you ever see those dolphins swimming in front of the ships and things sure. like that? Okay, it was doing something like that but obviously a little bit further out. Um, somehow the – USS Curacao slowed down to the point where the nose of the uh, of the ship actually hit into the Curacao and sprung a leak in the front cargo hold where all the prisoners were and a good portion of them drowned. Oh my God! In that in that ship, oh, it must have been horrible. Um, well, yeah, I, I believe you're right. It was, and. Um, it, it, you know, I caught some really, really interesting screaming and talking in German uh, in that front cargo hold, and some light anomalies on photo. I mean, I've caught I caught lights in midstream and midair. I caught stuff arcing with nothing in front of it or behind it. Um, the, it, it you know, that place definitely has some activity, uh, to say the least. I was more than impressed with it. Uh, you did some of that stuff on the internet, man, like on YouTube or Facebook or something. You know, maybe I'll let you do the website design to organize it uh, when it's. Oh time, yeah, make me do all the work. Yeah, when it's time. Jeez. When when I have okay, come on, think about this. I got the film coming up that I'm working on. That's going to be so amazing. It's not funny. Uh, that's going to hopefully get the theatrical release. I've got me traveling across the country doing these shows. Um, I've. It's like, is my plate not full enough? Um, putting these on the internet and then having to play Q and A on it, and mm-hmm. um, you know, there are so many paranormal audio, you know, podcasts and and uh, video on YouTube. Do I really want to add to the pile and have that scrutiny until my next once once the film that you know what I'm talking about? And, oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, folks, I have a film I am working on. That I wouldn't uh, give uh, too much details there, my friend, until you have everything finalized and <clears throat> you know signed and all the T's crossed and I's dotted. And You're right. You're right. You I know what I mean? I this, this is a good one, folks. It's, yeah. a, it's a really interesting story. And, and uh, actually, you know, Brent, I might want to have you do the soundtrack and be involved as well, too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. I'm working on a soundtrack now, um, Phantom of the Opera. 
It's oh, a nice. remake of the old, uh, the original horror film, and it's outstanding. It's it's great. I really? composed music for NASA, ABC, CBS, and all those guys. So I'll just drop some names there. But yeah, yeah, actually, go, yeah. Through the, go through the alphabet, not a problem. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I did that we'll, earlier. We'll, by the we'll way, we'll talk yeah. offline, and, and no problem at all. So we don't, you know, the movie is based on a best-selling book on Amazon. So um, yeah, there there's definitely some credentials and. Uh, People that are listening can even be involved in it as an extra, but that's a you whole. You just other gotta thing. get a hold of us. Uh, easiest way: Skywatchers Radio TV at gmail dot com. Yes, there there will be some fun stuff along the way on it. But anyway, yep. ju- my plate is rather full right now. After I get that, after I get the ball rolling and the infrastructure done, my goal actually is is to actually. Put up on one of the uh, Kickstarter or indie websites sure. because I have the prop. I would go with Indiegogo, other than you know, okay. instead of Kickstarter. To be honest, because you know, Kickstarter, if you don't make your goal, you if you're off like, if, like if you're off like two dollars, man, they don't give you a penny. Is that right? Indiegogo, yeah, Indiegogo. Oh, yeah. If, if you even if you don't meet your threshold on Indiegogo, like say you're a few bucks off, they'll give you whatever you get. You know, if, if you if you're Pledging or looking to get like fifteen thousand dollars to get a project, a project off the ground, and you get fourteen thousand something in, on Kickstarter, and they don't give you the money. You know how upset are you going to be? Pretty bit. upset, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, now on Indiegogo, they'll give you the money. They'll give you all fourteen thousand dollars, which that alone could help anybody. Absolutely. You know, you, if you're a grand off or a few bucks off, they should just give you the money. But uh, yeah, go to Indiegogo.com, everybody, right. if you want to get a project going. That's yeah. the best place to go to. My be project is is, and I have the property that I've already looked at. It is a defunct uh, hospital um, that I am going to set up literally a 24 seven ghost hunting cameras and audio files that everybody will be able to download and do their own EVP searches and their own video searches that they can be a part of the ghost hunting, uh, experience live right then and there without any worries. This would be uh, something that to get like, yeah. uh, Dan Aykroyd involved in. Yeah, this that, is you know, a nice spin, you know, this is a nice unique spin. Yeah. On a tried and true hunt, you know, because right. we all know. Now, I was going to ask you guys. And it's to... verifiably haunted. It, 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 there, right. there, it is verified already that there is activity there is the best answer that I'm going to give. I'm not going to say what part of the country or what country it's in because there's actually two properties in Canada that were uh, pointed out to me as well. Um, we have but... a whole mental institute here that goes back to the turn of the century that is – been closed down for years. Yeah, but is it desolate and still for sale? It is desolate, and I don't know if it's for for sale or not. I have tried myself in vain to get access to it, and because of insurance reasons, of course, liability because they don't know the condition of the innards. Um, well, they Brent, absolutely I will... refuse. Brent, you and I will talk after hours, after sure. show, and uh, we will find out who we need to contact to see about what the price tag is on it. Sure, absolutely. Because I, be I, I would think that I would think there's at least a hundred thousand people that would drop ten dollars just once. And I would think so too. Now, to what's curious? Always been curious to me, guys, and maybe you can help me out with this too. Why are hospitals so haunted? Why are mental institutions so haunted? Why I haven't you know, that's entries. funny. There's no, one down here. You will There's have one. the odd, for example, you'll have the odd university that might be haunted, maybe one or two ghosts, right? Right, yeah. But these things, I mean, they're just full. Uh, have you heard of the uh, Time uh, Warp or something? Have you heard of the, the Buildmore Hotel? Have you heard of that one? Buildmore sure. Hotel? Yeah, yeah. Down sure, the one in Tampa, right? That's right. No, 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 no. Down here in Miami. Biltmore. Oh, that Buildmore. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's another Biltmore that's just outside of Tampa that was also in World War II, a uh, hospital. Um, that's where TAPS ran their convention a while back called TAPSCon. By the way, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We have a caller on the line, uh, 925. You're live on Skywatchers Radio uh, with Brett Holland, our guest. Uh, welcome. I can save you guys a trip to Canada. I've just come to my apartment. i got ghost cats in my apartment. Ghost cats? Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I honestly believe ghosts can see into a visual spectrum better than we can in the upper and lower infrared and ultraviolet. Uh, so when cats do look at things that are behind no, no, you... No, you don't understand. My, you don't understand. My cats aren't seeing the ghost. My two cats that died are in the apartment. They're, his cats uh, are okay. the ghosts. Okay, hang on, hang on. Uh, i got to ask you. That's Paula, why I say ghost Paula, cats. What's your, what's your name, by the way? George. First name. 
Hey, George, how are you? I'm Alan. Um, okay. Let me ask you, how old is the property that you're in? There's a logic uh, and a reason why I'm asking this, though. Mid-50s. Okay. And, Brent, you would ask this question. A lot of people why? have died here, by the way. So Okay. Oh, One thing I've personally noticed from personal Senior experience. Building. What I've experienced personally, more properties that have more limestone in the sheetrock, more stone in the building, mm -hmm. it seems to act as a barrier, like a, as I've said on a show prior, like a Faraday cage, where things, the energy gets trapped inside and it can't escape because it, it just doesn't, it can't move in the direction it needs to. Um, it's obviously from the 50s, so I'm assuming there, it's more lathe than, you know, if, if a property has limestone from the walls being made out of lathe and plaster instead of sheetrock, those properties seem to be more spiritually active and energy active, uh, like castles in other parts of the world. More limestone in the stones that they cut, more activity. Um, you'll notice the reason that more recent properties, especially with Chinese drywall, uh, <laughs> uh, don't have as much haunting activity as um, some of the places that are made with lathe and, pl lathe and plaster or have a high limestone uh, or, or crystal dust uh, content in the sheetrock. Well, I so, know uh, well, that my, is my one cat get, oh, sorry, get killed in front of the building. The other cat I had to put to sleep. And both of them are in my bedroom a lot of time meowing, and there's no cat in here. I have two cats, but they're outside a lot. So often I'll have and guests I on the show. Come back and my bur another cat that died came back in my birthday and bit me. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> wait, wait, but did you, did you actually get physical marks from it? Well, he had a habit when he was alive of coming on my chest and biting my chin. And one morning. At uh, 5.30 in the morning, the exact minute he was born, because he was born next to me, I had two mama cats that had their babies in my arms on the floor, and I was lying on the floor uh, with the heater going full blast. The room got as cold as a meat locker, oh. and on my chest, I felt the outline of a head, tail, fur, feet, the whole thing, put my hand down there, and his name was Snooky. He was named after ba Baby Snooks, the Fanny Bryce character. And all oh, I was time, hoping it wasn't the girl from the uh, Jersey Shore, Snooky. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, and, good. Uh, I'm 61. I'm too old for that. And okay, uh, good. The cat bit me on the chin and disappeared. I, and wow. he had been, he had just died the previous year, had cancer, and that's my other cat. One of my cats had cancer, and he had gotten a habit of that in the last year. It was like biting me on the chin really hard, and so I knew he came back to tell me he was all right. Can I just wow. interject for a second? Please, by all means. Yeah. Please, yeah. Very often I'll have um, s people on the show, that, and we'll discuss this very type of subject, not so much with animals, but with apparitions and things and ghosts that hang around houses. And what it is, I, I think it's a testament to your, and I can hear it in your voice, you're a kind guy, and they would probably stay with you because they were the happiest there. And that's yeah. not a bad way to spend eternity, right? We also had one other weird thing in my life. The day my dad was buried, there were 30 of us. He came, his spirit walked through my uh, bedroom wow. into the living room, look at, looked at everybody there. My mother freaked out, walked through the living room and out the window. So wow. we're very, our family is very psychic. Amazing. My mother knows that everybody's Sounds sick like and when that. everybody dies. I've also had time portal experiences where I've gone... And suddenly everything changes, and I'm back like uh, uh, one time I, I everything changed, including me, and I was on December 6, 1941. All the cars changed. All the people changed. Uh, I was sit standing in front of a newsstand in San Francisco, and there was a news vendor there. And one time in San Francisco, there were seven newspapers, and I looked at the newspapers, and the vendor had changed. My clothes had changed. All the cars were 30s uh, vintage cars. The people were dressed in those things. And I looked at the paper. It said December 6, 41. And that happened twice in the city. And also in the Presidio, I was mm -hmm. running on the city. My dad was in the Army. And a gunnery uh, crew appeared in front of me. They were dressed in Civil War, in war uniforms. Good San God. San Francisco is a tight sinkhole. Yeah. There's lots of ghosts. Yeah. There. 
Any idea why you would be projected there? Do you think it could have been past life experiences? Because obviously, if you're 65, you well, were born in my for case, World War II. Might be, oh, right. I w- oh, sorry. I was told once by a yeah. psychic that I had died in World War II as a combat soldier. Oh, God. Okay. And my dad was in the Army for 30 years, and I've all been, always been interested in the military. So, and I've died twice. I've been pronounced dead. Oh my! Back. When I was okay, I gotta ask the question. Ha, hold on, have you have you ever uh, had any aggressions uh, therapy or anything That's like that? That's where with, I was uh, gonna go. No, no, I get no trouble with this life. <laughs> <laughs> Might That's not be a bad great, idea, though. I mean, the best answer I've heard, George. <laughs> it, it is a great answer, but I mean, yeah. it might not be a bad idea. It sounds like you might have a really rich That's history. All I need have you know. another guy living inside of me telling me I can live with it. Uh, <laughs> somebody somebody else hanging out, not paying rent, eh, buddy? That would be my life. Yeah. The guy in my brain, you know, they'd all have at me, and then I wouldn't know who the hell I am. I don't know where I am now when I have, when I have coffee for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but, what a uh, story. that's an amazing story, George. It really yeah, is. Yeah, oh, yeah. My, I remember my any gra- smells from other, San Francisco, my George? Got, I'm sorry, what? Did you remember any smells or, or, or textures or anything of that nature or well, somebody you may have recognized? Uh, which one are you referring 1941 to? 1941 or, yeah, what, when you were yeah. in San Francisco. No, you were I I mean, that's a very busy street corner. It's where the Trans Bay Terminal used to be. They're building a new office building there. But everything on that street, all the buildings changed to the decor. If they were all stores in the 40s and 30s. That's right. Yeah. The clothing of everybody had changed. The cars. And now we have, you know, collector street cars in San Francisco. There were street cars there. There were buses. That's right. And that happened on Sutter Street once. The same thing happened. Everything went back to the 40s. So, all right. I got I I to ask you a question if I can. Slip or what? Yeah. <laughs> I got I to ask you a question here. Was Did these experiences happen before or after you died and came back? or you had a, Did you die or did you just have an NDE? Oh, no, I died at 5 and 12. So this happened, ah. uh, this stuff happened in the 70s. After, yeah. After. Okay, so you were yeah. you were already tuned in, quote unquote. Right. You oh, know, yeah, that, well, that reminds me of the movie uh, Flatliners. Remember that movie when uh, they, they all... Die oh, on sure. purpose in the Yeah, that did not have a happy yeah. ending. Yeah, that, no, it did not. No, uh, it did not. Also, my grandfather, when he died, he was in Germany. We were living in Washington. You see, my mother woke up at three in the morning. He was standing in front of the bed. So we, oh my God. we're we're tied into all that stuff. Uh, that's why I'm convinced there's something going on after life. I went through the tunnel, saw the light, was floating above my bed, saw the nurses and doctors, and I remember that much. But as a kid, you don't have any concept you're going to die. That's right. right. I just so knew if I went to the light, I wasn't going yeah. back to my body. Some people That's say they amazing. were met by Jesus. Some people say, no, there was no... I'm Jewish. I'm not going to meet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we're surrounded by them tonight, Brent. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Based on how Brent pronounced something earlier, hey, I think he qualifies as well. Yeah. No, don't, actually, don't you guys I, believe in Jews for Jesus, man? No, I'm... I'm no, not, right? Messiah has not come according to us. <laughs> That's why, I studied you know, with the me. Lubavitch in Montreal, the Torah Center, but I'm a goy. Um, okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I can pretend to be a Juban so just to fit not, in. My mother's a professional <laughs> Jewish Cuban. family, you know. Okay. But, uh, I'm not <laughs> was there a warmthness to the light or anything? On. George, was huh? there a warmthness to the light? Was there good feelings towards it or anything of that nature? No, it just, I saw this really bright, it was kind of like a car headlight in a tunnel. Oh, okay. And I ah. had the sense that if I, if I went, or a train right. headlight. You know, you see a train approaching you. Sure. That's that's scary and, in itself, yeah. And I, I knew if, but it wasn't a train. Mm. Uh, Understood. I had problems with the train when I was two. I crawled down to the train tracks to the Pennsylvania freight line. My mother found me there sitting waiting for the train. But, oh, my um, God. George. <laughs> I was an early rail fan, you know. Okay, so, so, so we but, got so five years old, then like, 12 years old, but you could have hit three years old. Right. Yeah. Uh, this thing looked like mm-hmm. the effect you get for a train light coming toward you down a track. You know, the Doppler effect coming toward you that goes away. Any sound that you I... mentioned Doppler effect? Any sound? Did you hear no. tracks? Oh. No, no, I know. They didn't hear tracks. I, I, I was in a long tunnel, and there was this right. bright, but diffused light. I'm just getting, using an analogy. Cause I've been did you hear anything? Like, Did you hear like no. music or no, people nothing. asking you to come towards the light? 
No, no. I just knew. If I somehow I sensed. You now at five and twelve, I right. had no concept of uh, you know dying. I had known anybody who died yet. yet right. Later, but uh, that if I went into that light, I wasn't going back to my body, and I was nice. dead. Uh, I was pronounced dead the second time. I didn't come back. My heartbeat, respiration, pulse, they couldn't find anything. Second time I was dead, apparently, for at least a day. I, everything stopped. But my mother was he's a retired nurse. She told him, you're not going to let him, not going to take him away. He's still here. The first time, I had 107 fever. She had them pack me in ice. Wow. The hospital happened. They have to bring the ambulance to her hospital. Right. And they thought she was not in Europe. They did that for high fevers for years. They put me in a sitz bath and dumped ice into me. I sat in that. I was in that bathtub for three days. I was gone for three days. Oh my! I don't goodness. know where I was, but I was gone. Wow! I wasn't in my body, and I came it, back. So yeah, you came back. And I've talked to uh, uh, Daniel Brinkley about this. Sure. And, yeah. Uh, it's why? Why did I come back? And it's probably to. Post online, I don't know, but uh, I, I do YouTube videos. <laughs> but the, the guy, but, uh, well, you, but why not? You're you're meant to come back to be on this show tonight and talk about your experience. That could be too. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I missed you guys earlier because uh, I came home and it's allergy season. I'm dying right now. Uh, but Doctor Lear, and I'm I'm sorry that happened. To, and by the way, yeah, this, yeah. I recently went to a hospital for surgery within the last couple of years. Okay. And frequently, uh, they forget about you. They get so busy at the nursing yes. station, they forget yep. about people. My mother was a nurse for 50 years, and uh, I know uh, what happens in hospitals. You go in there, and the next thing you know, uh, a couple of hours have passed. You go out in mm -hmm. the the bathroom, and you go to the bathroom by yourself. They don't always escort you. Yeah, it's not a conspiracy. I don't talking about that last night. You know, you know, no, it's not a conspiracy. I know folks like to say, "Oh, well, there must be some kind of conspiracy." He was left alone. You know what? My mother has been in and out, in and out of the hospital the last uh, year, and uh, it's happened to her. I mean, it, they just get so busy at the hospital. My so. mother's ninety-five. She just had another heart attack. But she oh God, bless her away. I don't know how she. Uh, well, it's only going to get worse with Obamacare. Huh? Uh, gee, thanks, there, Alan. It's way to bring us down. <laughs> Now, is there Don't not a law, of folks, bomb. is there not a law in the United States where if you're ill or you're on death's bed, they have to treat you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is, there, there is that law. So For they now. can't just yeah, push, but I'll tell you what, push you I'll to tell the you curb, what right? With her, she had a do not resuscitate, they resuscitate her anyway, so they ignore the laws. Huh. Not to huh. mention that they don't actually they, – they can't ignore you, but they could push you off to another hospital if they don't want you and you don't have the right insurance. Oh, I see. George, can I ask you a personal question? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. Did it affect your faith at all? Did you become hmm. more or less um, religious? I hate to use that word. I don't know how else to, to describe it. Well, well, we, know he we know he doesn't believe in Jesus. We know that much. <laughs> My dad drove, took me to Catholic Church on Sunday. My mother took me to the temple. Oh, you Saturday. poor soul. You are confused. So, really, so, I don't so know what spiritually... <laughs> Don't forget, religion and spiritual are and are two different things. Are two yeah. totally different things, you know. Uh, well, I look. I have a weird problem with me anyway. It, it's not weird, but it's weird to me. Mm -hmm. Animals follow me. Cats. Wow. I've had deer come up to me. I've had a wild cougar come to me. One and flop like a cat, and one petting. And everybody's freaking out. I've had George. Uh, George, you're uh, the animal whisperer, my friend. I've That's what you are. I've had beast dogs come up to me and flop. I, I got banned from the racetrack because the horses going to the paddock would come over yeah. and nuzzle me while I was standing or reading the form. So every dog you, here in town, I live in uh, Martinez. Every dog here in town, people walking the dog. The dog will veer over to me and start one petting. So there's something about me with the animals. I don't know, George. Why and, 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 so. And this is a serious question. Have you ever had any uh, communications with the cats or, or with animals in general? Like, have you ever uh, been around an animal and they said something that you sensed and you knew what they were talking about? No, I, I just talk to them all the time. You know, hello, uh, hello, dog, you beautiful dog. And they immediately come over to me and, and they, I look at them and they'll come over to me. So I don't, it's not a, it's not a conscious thing, you know. Right. But uh, I've had, I've had people just go, my dog doesn't do that, or my cat doesn't do that. Mm. 
And mm. the BART police got mad at me. I used to go to Lake Merritt, and their police dog was building me in flop. And they, what are you doing with dog? What do you mean you're dog? standing there. <laughs> I guess so, that uh, there's something inside you that they sense is very yeah. soft, if you will, or very approachable. And Either that or yeah, we well, take an EMF meter to him and see if he lights it up or not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe I, his uh, near-death experiences death. opened uh, his we senses a, up. We, once we were at a pond, I had a whole family of deer. <laughs> my, um, the mother, the doe, the buck, and two babies come up to me and, and want petting. So there's something, I don't know, maybe I was St. Francis. Who knows? Um, know. Maybe. I wonder if be. this is why. I think he was with animals and stuff, if I remember correctly, but. I'm, I'm a little rusty in my Catholic theology. It's been 40 years so with the catechism. Um, <laughs> Maybe there's something to that in your return to this world. Just, just I throwing that, that out there. I, I, was, I was always, even as a child, I was into mm. UFOs. My mother's into astrology, so uh, mm. uh, I, I was always looking into this stuff my dad could never understand. It. You and those damn UFOs used to call him and said, Dad, I'm reading about <laughs> things that people don't understand. Yeah. And when I was in the Civil Air Patrol, we saw a poor football field long UFO. The Air Force told 500 of us we were looking for a plane in the Sierra that it was Venus. That's when I didn't believe the Air Force anymore. Wait, wait, a four that foot was long football. Hold on, the, fo- yeah. the four foot. The four football four long, football field long was it sh- what? UFO. What was it shaped like? Like a like a um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, you know what curves from left to right on boats on the top and the bottom. Right. Okay, the big arc That's wing. What it looked like. Yeah. The ar- okay. And it was the size I would estimate at the time. An arc wing commander. Mm-hmm. Almost, he, the wing commander of the Civil Air Patrol in the Presidio was an air, active Air Force officer, and he raised so much hell saying his cadets and the searchers were personally insulted for the Air Force telling us we saw Venus at a time of the year when Venus couldn't be seen. And the other thing is, we were trained to identify stars, planets, mm-hmm. because we had to go out and look for planes. Sure, sure, yeah, right. And that was in 1966 when I was, I was a you know, junior cadet. I was, what, uh, 14? Something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wow. this, when that, that went on, I said, I, and I, I had been reading Keo's books anyway, but I, and Adamski and all of those guys, mm-hmm. Frank Scully, Frank Edwards. But I said, I don't believe the Air Force when they tell me. I know what I saw. I don't know what 500 of us saw. It was a big stink about it at the time that, you know, you're telling us it was Venus. So this is you know, has anybody else in your George? Has anybody else in your family had similar experiences uh, with UFOs and stuff like that, or is it just been yourself? Well, we we also saw one. My mother and I saw one. Uh, we were driving on 101 in Marin when Marin had orchards and fields, and there was one sitting by the freeway. Jeez. Oh my! And that took off. It was a, this one was kind of weird though. It kind of looked like. Um, Lonnie Zamora's craft in, in New Mexico. It was on stilts. And it was bright silver, and it only was there for a minute, and it just, just it went up and disappeared. So uh, that was when I was twelve. So there's something, uh, there's something, something going. There. On. I don't think I've been abducted or any of that stuff. Right, but right. Uh, um, this has always been an interest to me. I've got about 150 paranormal books in my apartment too. But wow. But but uh, she, my mother knew when my uncle died, he died of a heart attack on his retirement. He came over from dinner and died. And so she's a active receiver. I just have a sense that something's wrong, but I never know what it is. It's a tremor in the force. Yeah, that, definitely. That, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you just have a really high metachlorine count. You know, hey, let's, you guys laugh wait, about that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to know about the midichlorian count, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, I, I, I got to disagree. I have a question I'd like to throw out, if you would. Sure, go ahead. I asked, sure. I asked Stanton Friedman this. I didn't get an answer. Okay. I would like somebody to do a study of abductees to see if any of them have uh, Tay-Sachs disease, uh, leukemia herpes, uh, other diseases that, uh, uh, kidney disease, because 
are the grays abducting people that are totally healthy, or are they are they not abducting people that are sick? Hmm. And no one's ever ever answered that question for me. Well, you know what, George? Last That's a good week question. on on my show Night Fright, I had a guest on from Canada, and uh, she's a psychotherapist, and she does hypnotherapy as well. And she's asking for folks from around the world to be part of a study she's putting together. And mm. uh, she's an honest broker, if you will. She's very sincere. And she's brokenhearted, too, at the recent death of uh, Roger, because um, yeah. she did talk about him as, or as late as last week. But certainly, I can put those questions in an email to her and send it off to her and see if she could uh, perhaps document some of the physical well, one variable uh, maladies I would ask that they're suffering from. Sure, please go ahead. Brent, one variable that I will put into that question is, is you know, diseases where they acquired, like obviously herpes is acquired. You're not really right. born with it. I'd be curious to find out if these abductees, do they have any genetic abnormalities? Yeah. Mm. Very good is question. anything inherited right. disease-wise? And were any diseases gotten by... Well, herpes isn't by chance. Um, right, that's sexual, but uh, but a disease you would get by her- chance, like right. measles, you know, what mumps, you're getting at. Mm-hmm. you know, right, right, something like that, something there's not. Yeah, a vaccine. There's- I'd be I'd be more interested if it's something that it's uh, you know passed down through the genes through family. Uh, and, you know, I would be curious statistically across all three. Number, you know, well. it, is is there anything inherited? Is there anything that they acquired? Is there anything that's you know you know some other variable? Yeah. That, that would be other, very uh, interesting. Sure, George. The other thing would be interesting to find out if any of these people have been cured of diseases after they got abducted. Which I that's interesting too. Yeah. Say yeah, I don't think you know. It's it's funny you guys bring that up tonight because I don't think there's ever been uh, an in-depth study into abductees when it comes to any diseases like this. I don't think I've ever read anything. Dealing with this. So that's that's one of the things. If he had lived one day, I, I've talked to Friedman. I, I have correspondence with Richard Hoagland. I bugged George Nori in my videos. The guy from <laughs> Pittsburgh, and he's sending me his cookbook. I made fun of his cookbook. The price doubled on Amazon after I did my video. But um, uh, <laughs> I was going to ask Doctor Lear, hey, get someone to the study of these people and see what their medical history is. And see if certain things have a predisposition. I can't say the word predisposition to being abducted or not. That's very like interesting. Like if you have diabetes, yeah. or if you have a kidney dialysis, are you not going to get abducted? Or if you're perfectly right. healthy, you're going to get abducted. Very and I, I'd be curious about like Whitley, what yeah. his medical history is, which I would have to ask him one day. You know, it's funny. I had um, another fella on. Uh, from McGill University, which is uh, in Montreal. It's kind of our, our, it'd be our Harvard, if you will, in Canada, to draw an analogy. All right. And his name is Dr. Um, Dunderry, and he did a study. And I asked him, I said, is it possible some of the abductees, abductees are using this as a coping mechanism for abuse that they inherited? Not inherited, mm. but they... Suffered. Suffered. Through. Suffered right. through when they were kids. And he said he wasn't sure, perhaps, in some cases. And, yeah. But he said, even then, he said, there's still so many similarities to people that don't have any sexual abuse or any physical or emotional abuse when they're children. And it seems to be generational, generation after generation. And to me, going back to the kid thing again, you know, I'm a big child advocate. This makes me crazy. If I was a parent and couldn't protect my kids, oh my god! You know, and how much of it has to be uh, attributed to like sleep paralysis and other things like that? I mean, I, when I was a kid, I, I suffered uh, for, from sleep paralysis for years. I mean, I had sure. I was like I was the typical uh, person who had sleep paralysis. You know, they would, would you know wake up, not be able to move, uh, look around the room, see things walking around, or, or feel things walking around. I had that happen a lot to me. I don't think I was ever abducted. I just think that you know it's just uh, something that uh, is wrong with the brain when you're sleeping, and something just happens. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I mean, how how many of uh, of those people fall back asleep, 
have a dream that they were abducted, and then th- when they wake up, it's so vivid that they really believe that they were abducted and they were taken. Uh, how many of that happens to people that are, you know, maybe fans of the genre of ufology and maybe watched the uh, movie a few weeks ago, and that's just stayed in their subconscious mind? Uh, and you know, they True, had this dream. Right. You, I mean, this could be, uh, y- you know, you could check off a lot of uh, thick cases of abduction with uh, certain easy explanations like that. But there's always that one little bit of, you know, percentage left over which you can't explain. And that's uh, the the ones that really are fascinating and could be uh, true stories. I think there is some truth to abduction cases. I don't want to dismiss them all, so. Yeah, I think so, too. Can I tell you, you know, we kind of beat around the bush about a certain celebrity with a... uh, a UFO. <laughs> oh, my UFO. friend, let me tell you one thing. I never beat around the bush, but okay. continue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, we ha- if we have to say the name, you can say, uh, I guess. Stan no. Romanek well, was on the show correct. and yeah. um, several years ago, and I was talking to him in all sincerity. And I, because I believe, I believe him. I really do. I, I think, you know, perhaps he's gone off a certain degree, but I'll tell you the story. I'll cut to the chase. I said, can you describe the aliens that come and get you? And I thought he was going to say, yeah, the typical gray. And he said, well, at what age? And I said, well, when you were a kid. And he said, well, he said the, the aircraft came down, the, the spaceship it was circular. And uh, kind of describing, I guess, close encounters of the three kind, I thought. Right, third kind of movie, yeah. Yeah, I, that, I said the three kind, uh, and it yeah. is. Just, <laughs> I do apologize. I to, and I've been composing all day for a score, and... Okay, poor Brenton. I should have had an extra cup of coffee at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's okay. Really we won't beat you up too much on it. Don't worry. Thank no, it is God. 3 in the morning almost, so you're, you're forgiven. Go Thank ahead. you, my friend. <laughs> oh, that's uh, right. You are in our time zone. He's, I recently yeah. read an article saying exactly what you brought up, that some of these people, it's actually a transferred memory of being abused as children. Well, the, you know, it could, could be. Yeah. Yeah. He, he told, told me that, that the door opened up on the spacecraft. And this alien came out, and I said, well, what did it look like? He said, well, I was only eight years old. To me, it looked like a fireman. So I said, okay, we continue <laughs> the rest of the show, and I let it go, right? Now, unbeknownst to him and unbeknownst to a guy who came up to me, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he, he came up to me in confidence at the radio station, and he's a minister, so he doesn't de- really listen to my show or anything. Not that he's against it. It's just not his thing. And he said, can I tell you something in confidence? And I said, of course. And I've never revealed his name since. He said, we were down in, um, let me pick an island. Uh, I won't give you the real island. Barbados. And I was six years old. My brother was eight years old. Spaceship came down. Right around supper time. My father was inside cooking supper for us. Spaceship came down. Door opened, out walked an alien. But you know, the funny thing is, Brent, and I said, what? It looked like a fireman. And I get goosebumps right now and every time I say that. Because these were two guys with absolutely no connection. He doesn't listen to the show. Same description. Maybe Stuff there's like a race that. fireman on a planet somewhere. We've got 54 different kinds of aliens. <laughs> now the 55th now. You've found a new race. <laughs> National planet planet fireman. <laughs> fireman. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Maybe, right? maybe it's George, I think you might be the best caller we we'll ever have on this show, by the way. <laughs> maybe it's all those guys that died, God forbid, in, uh, in, in 9-11, and they oh. went to another planet. They're coming back as physical beings. <laughs> Uh, All those firemen and first, first, uh, what's it, what's the word? First, um, first responders. God, first, first responders, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So Maybe they're coming back. You know, that's I'm, weird. Uh, I never heard of firemen before. Yeah, yeah that's new, before. that's new to me. And, you know, I, I've interviewed Stan also in the past, and I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, Brent. I really, I'm opposite from me. I really don't believe uh, the story. And, you know, at first it was very interesting, and I want to believe. Okay. It's like everything. It's like the alien autopsy video in the 90s. I really wanted to believe that video. You know, I was one of those people that just, I was like, yeah, man, an alien on the slab table. Look at that. It's dead and it's real. And then it turned out to be fake. And when when I interviewed Stan, there was, you know, there's something about him. I, I could tell he's a very good speaker. He knows uh, his story really well. He can present it very well. He's very uh, approachable. He seems like a very nice guy. But, you know, throughout history, a lot of really nice guys who are really good speakers have been really evil. 
and done really evil acts. And he, I'm not saying I got that vibe that he was evil or anything like that, uh, but from looking at the video proof, from looking at the evidence, and there was a video, and he had really a rough month, let's be honest. Uh, he got caught hoaxing in a video, in an interview. I don't know if you saw that. No. Uh, ho- hoaxing no, paranormal it. activity. This is hilarious. hysterical. He was doing an interview, and I'll link it to you guys here in a minute. Uh, he was doing an interview on video, and I think the uh, interviewee or the interviewer was in Australia. And in the video, you could, you know, they're talking about paranormal activity that he's had and whatnot. And at one point, he flicks, like, what looks like a a piece of paper or something towards himself. And it hits him on the head. And he's trying to play it off like that was, you know, a ghost that threw something at him. Was he messing around and joking? No, he was, like, dead serious. And he started looking around, like, saying, what was that? How did that happen? Where where did that come from? And he was trying to sell it as a serious thing. And the host just, the host kept going. Like, he just, he kept playing. And and, and and who is this again? Uh, Stan Romanek. This is Stan Romanek. Oh, Stan Romanek. Okay. Right. Uh, And I'll I'll post the link right now also because we're, you know, we're short on time, so I don't want to go over too much. Uh, But I'm going to post the link here uh, so you guys can look at it on the Skype. And I will post it on our Facebook account also so you guys can check it out there. Uh, But. Not only is he caught that one time, he does it again, and he flicks what looks like a, a USB drive or something like that up in the air and hits him in the head. And then he looks around like, oh, my God, what is that? And you see, this is, happens to me all the time. These ghosts, and he starts going on, uh, on about the story. Now, the thing is, well, he, and, and, and this is something that I've seen people do before on video when they're trying to hoax something on video in a quick type of setting like this. I think what happened here is Stan didn't notice the camera, how wide it was capturing, and it actually captured at one point his hand flicking the drive into the air. <laughs> Busted. Sorry. Completely. So, I, I mean, I just, like I said, I just linked it on there again. It'll be on the uh, Facebook page here in a minute. But, yeah, I'm calling uh, you that know, Squatch. Okay. Once I, saw, once I saw that video, I, you know, to me that was enough uh, to know that Stan Romanek is either A, not playing with a full deck, or B, he's doing this stuff on purpose to deceive us. And, and I, you know, that really ticks me off. And it's just another black eye for ufology in general to have a person like that doing stuff like that and you know let's be honest the when he came forward he was very vocal about the evidence he had and he had all this stuff look i'm buddies with uh, with people that move on i'm friends with alejandro rojas and you know they, these all these guys supported the heck out of this guy uh th- which is the reason why i got interested in this case because he got so much coverage that you were you were drawn to the case you know what i mean it was one of those things where it drew everybody who was interested in this and his subject was drawn to his case immediately. And to be honest with you, just from looking at the evidence over the years, he's presented absolutely nothing that's made me a believer. The alien in the window, anybody could do that with, techn- with the way technology is. I mean, we were saying earlier how advanced yeah. technology is, right? Yeah, and the little rubber guy. <laughs> Exactly. It doesn't take. And I saw another. And this is the thing. This is what I love about Stan's videos. There's a couple of videos of him, uh, or of his that he's put on the internet. And there's another one that has a little alien also. It's in one of the rooms, and it's peeking through like the side, like where the wall is, and it's looking at like by the wall. And now let me let me say something. If you're gonna try to pick up aliens, at least let me see the whole body. If you're gonna pick something up, why is it every time it's behind something, you know? cleverly disguising the, who's holding the puppet up, I guess. I mean, why is there a blurry because video Because you need to have time? the puppeteer behind it, and you can't Exactly. That's, that's the problem, and that's exactly... The, the, every single video I've seen from Stan is very easy to, to just dismiss, and that's my main problem with Stan Romanek. Look, uh, like I said before, it, I hope he has his day in court, If uh, if and he will have his day in court, obviously. Uh, if the guy is innocent, by all means, I hope that uh, you know he he gets his justice, and uh, everybody who you know concocted this hoax against him to take him down are brought to the light, and you know, and everything uh, works well for him. If he is guilty, though, <laughs> uh, we'll if this torture. man is guilty, because Torture's you know there is fire. nothing worse than the crimes against children. As far as I'm concerned, that is the lowest of the low, folks. I mean, you can't get any lower than that. Uh, if he is guilty. Burn him at the stake. Amen. That's just my take. Uh, by the way, I've known two people who have gotten falsely accused of child molestation by child protective services, and they went through hell to get their children back. So, mm. uh, for what, it, what it's worth on that. There's another thing about the, the alien in the window. Except for the case in New York, the lady 
floated out of her window, was supposedly seen by the Secretary General of the UN. I yes. never see any aliens abduct anybody of people live in apartments. Like I've heard of New York. In, floor, I, I've floor, heard of stories in New like York. That. Yeah, but yeah. nowhere else. They're always in the first floor. The aliens don't want to go higher than that. They don't know how to use an elevator or the stairs or something. They don't still get that part. Well, you know, folks, I live in Canada, and I always say that, you know, we have aliens that are out in the open here, and they live in a place called Ottawa, except we call them politicians. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the no, 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 no. Those are free you know, prison I've, I've people. I've been in Toronto. My, my relatives live in Mississauga, so there you know, you the go. aliens get confused with the name changes. It used to be nice, friendly Port Credit, then I, I could spell Port Credit. <laughs> Who the hell changed it to Mississauga, for God's sake? I have no One idea. One of my pet peeves. Yeah, like, you know, George, we're, Pacific. George, you've been great. We're almost out of time here. I do have to let you go. Uh, we have oh, to uh, nice wrap up in a few minutes. but. Me on. Thank you for calling in, and please don't be a stranger. Call in whenever you like, my okay. friend. All right, Pleasure bye-bye. speaking with you, George. Take care. Oh, that was a great call. That's right okay. there. That that would probably go down, uh, Alan, as the the call of the year so far. What do you think? No, it's uh, the call of the year so far. Yeah. I think we're going to get better. I hope so. I hope we get a lot more callers in the future. Uh, it's uh, you know, Stan Romanek. Like going back to the the whole thing with Stan. Uh, it's it's really a messed up case because you know it's child pornography again. You know how many times have we've not heard somebody in the ufological community or in the paranormal community or somewhere in the conspiracy world be charged with these kind of allegations? Uh, it seems like this is the one charge that they always throw at him. But uh, there's so much evidence here, and this is where you know I this is where I'm convinced that there's definitely something here, Brent. Um, well, speaking of the, definitely something here, um, Earth Day is coming up on April 22nd, and um, CBC asked me to put together a little two-minute vignette because I had interviewed Jane Goodall. And folks, you, you okay. may not be aware of this, uh, but Jane Goodall believes in Bigfoot. And oh, she no has good. perfect reasons for it, too. She said, uh, I just sent you, um, by the way, through Skype, a little embed code. If you want to put that on your website, please feel free to. It's a high-def little two-minute vignette of Jane Goodall being interviewed by me and uh, her opinions on Bigfoot. Essentially, she says, and I'll paraphrase, that she's been in so many aboriginal villages around the world, deep in the woods, some more deep than others, and they all have the same type of story, that Hmm. there's usually two creatures, one's a bigger, furry beast, but not an ape, not a chimpanzee, larger than that. Uh, very humanistic, and um, she said, you know, whether whether you go to uh, northern BC, they would call it Sasquatch, or uh, the Abominable Snowman, or Bigfoot, every every culture has a similar type of creature, and she said, it's just too many reports, like we're getting with UFOs, I'll draw that analogy, for it to be ignored. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. Anyways, um, if you we, want to put that gotta, on your, your thing, go ahead. Yeah, we'll put that on there. We definitely want to have you back on in the future. We'll definitely get into a, I had a, a blast. Clip, but, yeah. No, but finishing off uh, my thought here real quick on, on the whole Stan Romanek thing, because uh, it's really important. Uh, this part of what I wanted to say was that the government would not spend so much money and time and effort uh, looking you know, into something like this. Uh, if there wasn't something there, if if look, if the government wants to take you down, they could do it within 24 hours tops. Agreed. Oh yeah, I believe there that. was such a long investigation. This goes this goes back to 2008, folks. Uh, you're talking about years they were investigating, years, and they were getting tips. Uh, they tracked IP addresses. I mean, there's all kinds of evidence here that is more solid than the alien in the window. Agreed. Did you so, ever have Paul Hellyer on your show? The actually, I have defense minister. Yes, I've had Paul Hilliard on the show. So you know, Not on this show, but on a different show. Okay, so you know his viewpoints, and, and that's coming yep. from a pretty heavy, um, credible person. Yeah. He was no, almost Prime Minister of Canada, by the way. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that uh, it's real, though. I mean... Well, okay, that's true, too. But uh, I'm just saying that, you know, there seems to be more and more people willing to come forward with um, buried... Uh, documents that we've never seen before, and I think the more documents we can get, oh yes, yeah. we'll get yep. it. We'll get into the reality of it all. Oh, I agreed with that. I mean, look at all the stuff from the MOD, and there you go. All the files that's come out. Yeah, you know, a lot of that stuff. Uh, again, look like we were saying, even about the uh, the uh, the 
sleep paralysis and stuff earlier. A lot sure, of that stuff could sure. be. Ex- there's a lot of stuff that could be explained away, but there is you know, a certain percentage that always stays unexplained, and that's the percentage that we need to get to and explain away. And the only way we we could do that, obviously, is we have uh, full disclosure from all our governments, which, again. Probably won't happen in our lifetime, sadly enough. But if there's well, anybody to support on that subject, is our good friend Stephen Bassett. So uh, please, uh, you know, mm-hmm. check out PRG's website and support what he's going through right now. And this month, uh, you know, they're getting all that stuff ready, and uh, they already sent out everything to uh, everybody in Congress for uh, so they could look at the packages and and uh, see the uh, presentation they put together for them. And uh, hopefully, that brings disclosure one day. Hopefully, that would be very sweet. Very, yeah, very probably sweet. won't be in our lifetime, those the which stinks. But anyway, uh, Brent, it's been a blast having you on, man, and I really want to have Absolutely you back on. So we, yes. talk, we could talk about I've Bigfoot. I had a blast. I, I feel so. like we've been all together forever. That yeah, is no terrific. Kidding. It's a small <laughs> Real quick, world before we <laughs> before we uh, go off air and Alan starts singing a little bit more. Uh, once again, give your website address and uh, tell everybody about your show when they can hear it and all that good stuff. Oh sure, um, my show is actually on Revolution Radio. But if you just go to the www.nightfrightshow.com website, all the shows are there the, in the archives for free for you to download. It's a paranormal conspiracy show. Uh, it's known as Canada's uh, Coast to Coast. Uh, I get a lot of the same uh, guests on. I get a lot of different guests as well. My big forte is JFK. I, uh, as I said before, Ted Sorensen was my friend, and I've written a book on the Kennedy assassination well, I'll let it out of the bag. Ted Soren confirms assassination. And that's from the inner circle, folks. And wow. Yep. Yeah, right. Bingo. It, not a coup d'etat. Mm. But it, it was a conspiracy. And uh, that's going to be revealed in my book, which is out, according to my publisher, next week. So don't hold me to that, because I've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you, Deborah. Yeah, Deborah. We, we definitely got to have you back on and talk about that book. I mean, that sounds interesting. Can you give me a PDF copy so I can check out the book or something? Absolutely. Absolutely. No problem. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take that. that as a read also. And by the way, if, if you want to have me on for paranormal questions uh, or some places that I've been and photo and video, I guess you can interview me if you want to. It's funny because you must add clairvoyant to your list of attributes because I was just going to ask the two of you on my show. Yeah, I, I called the psychic Done. hotline beforehand uh, uh, and they uh, told me. Uh, uh, uh. But you think they would have gone out – you know, the psychic hotline went out of business. You think they would have known that it was coming? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. It's Miss that Cleo. Call me now before I close up shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a good God night. Bless everybody. Once again, folks, thank you for listening in. This is Sky Watchers Radio. See you next week. And stay silent enough for a long period, and a lot of these folks, you know, do pass away. How long will it be until the population just doesn't care anymore? I don't know if that'll ever happen because um, there's so many great shows like your own that cover this topic, and they cover it very, very well. There's so much interest on the internet; it's played a key role in keeping these things alive. And you know, with the advent of, of cell phones, every cell phone has a telephone it has also something called a camera in it with incredible resolution that i'm embarrassed to say even 5 years ago it's better than my handheld camera and getting yeah. better by yeah. the day hold on right. hold on hold on, hold on. Jeez, great resolution yeah. great resolution doesn't mean it's light sensitive enough to catch what's flying in the sky at night that's true no that's a very good point actually that's a very valid point but i'll tell you what we're not that far off uh, you know the, no, the really galaxy aren't. G5 is coming out now with what is it, 16 megapixel and yeah, but it still the doesn't have night vision. Incredible. Well, no, it doesn't. You can get an app for that though. Uh, yeah, but the app needs to have. Yeah, the app doesn't work. Maybe for the first three feet in front of you, but nothing more than that. Come on. Well, you know, that might be true. And, and those night vision apps, all they do is paint the screen you're looking at green. They yeah, even you know have what? a thermal I'll, one too that makes a. Anything moving look like it's got a, a temperature signature. You know, there's I don't think we're I don't think we're that far off though, Alan. Really, from having that right in the palm of our hands on smartphones. It, it would be nice, but I don't think it's going to be cost effective just yet. Trust me. Uh, can you imagine what would happen if people had night vision cameras on their phones? Oh man. Okay. Not just on the ufology side, but you know, there's 
Yeah, for everything. We'll just leave it at that. It's, you know, just like just like we need now, mazed side with it. Um, it That's does, very good. Yeah, it's a good find, man. It, it, it does not look like smoke and mirrors when I usually call on a UFO scene. Bat squatch, um, <laughs> which if, Brent, you've heard our show once or twice before, you'll understand where that comes from. Um, <laughs> yeah, instead of bat. Uh, <clears throat> it, no, 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 no. Th- there was a gentleman. Uh, who was on the show with us a couple of months back. I'm not trying to beat him up for it, but instead of there being a Sasquatch, <laughs> um, he was telling us about uh, a, 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 a... It's Sasquatch another phenomenon thing. called Bat Squatch. Right, Bat Squatch. But he was telling me the wings are only 10 feet in length. And, and it has the, the head of a bat. And it has the head of a bat. And with the, That's the coolest thing ever. It sounds cool, but he's telling us that it can fly. And I called, I don't believe it, because the weight of something the size of a Sasquatch needs to have a larger wingspan to be able to lift it up in the air. Wow. So that's why I call it Bat Squatch. Bat Squatch. That sounds like a good description for it. Do you think it could be a hybrid of something? Um, I, I don't seems know. There to be a lot of hybrids emerging right now. That's why I'm just curious. Well, oh, you know. And, I, and I'm curious with hybrids. Maybe you guys could clarify some of this i'm wondering if it's just your average animal species trying to survive and if there's not enough in the in the community if you will to mate with they have to look outside outside their species yeah Hmm. maybe just to self uh survive i don't know what do you guys think interesting but i would think possibility it's a a possibility but i would bring up the question as being not the bad cop on the show. By the way, we we did find a picture for Bat Squatch, and I just linked it to you here on Skype, uh, Brent. I want you to look at that real quick. All right, everybody, welcome back to Sky Watchers Radio. We have our guest, Mr. Brent Holland. Brent, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I have to tell you, it's a real treat and a real pleasure. I wish it was on better circumstances, though. What a bummer. Uh, we really know, lost agreed. one of the great ones. You know, when, when I booked you, you know, <laughs> when I booked it last week, I was like, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Brent's going to be on. He's such a great guest. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then Dr. Roger Lear passes away, and I'm like, Bummer! Now that my whole week is ruined. Yeah, you know, and you're quite right. You were saying in the in the first part of the hour that I guess we're at that stage now when we're starting to lose a lot of the legends. I noticed Correct, that. Yeah. In the, you know, I do a lot of the Kennedy assassination thing too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know, just recently we've lost uh, James Take, who was an inadvertently responsible for the magic bullet. He was the third person hit in Dealey Plaza that day besides Governor Connolly and the president. And uh, because of him, the Warren Commission had to run back and scrap their first report and invent this magic bullet because now they had four wounds that they had to account for with only three bullets. So we just lost him. What a shame. And Ted mm. Sorensen passed away a few years ago. Uh, he was JFK's speechwriter, my friend. And, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, uh, I had... Um, uh, Stan Friedman on the show, and everybody knows Stan. God love him; he's a great guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. good people. A- and he was saying, you know, it's a rush to the uh, to the graveyard because a lot of these first person witnesses are starting to pass away now, mm-hmm. and it's so, just so tragic. You know, we grew up thinking that they're never going to get old; they're never going to leave us. <laughs> yeah. and we'll have them forever, and gee whiz, life is uh, fleeting at best, isn't it, guys? Oh, uh, it's it's incredible, you know. And of course, uh, not to forget uh, Jesse Marcel Jr. who passed away again. Absolutely, yeah. That long ago, and yeah. you know, it's it's funny, Brent, looking at some of these people that are you know passed away, and and looking at the you know what's left of ufology. There really uh, doesn't seem to be anybody, or you, not even just ufology, but you can count the paranormal, conspiracy uh, across the board. Anything that deals with these kind of subjects that we talk about on this show and other shows like ours, um, you know, th- you know the the faces. Uh, that are coming forward are not 
really to the same level in some sense. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but uh, for example, like we were saying earlier, we don't know who the next Roger Lear is. I mean, who's going to be that next mm-hmm. pioneer? Who's going to take you know that mantle and and run with it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I know I could I could say this. I'd nominate Jesse Marcel the third for ufology to continue that work. I mean, oh, well spoken guy, and he's yeah, fluent, great. and he he's up to date on everything. He might not be a bad person to pass the torch to. Yeah. But, you know, who's out there that we don't know about, you know, that we should know about? That's the real question. Maybe I, someone from the ranks is going to rise up unexpectedly. Let's hope. But who are in the ranks now? That's the real question. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now the one person uh, that I and one of the people that I respect the most I got to say in ufology is obviously Stephen Bassett. So if I want to say anybody deserves to have uh, you know people back him up right now with the work he's doing is Steve Bassett and obviously Jose Escamilla and the stuff that he's doing also it's just amazing work. But uh, yeah, I mean who's going to be that next person because we're not all going to be around forever and this begs the question: uh, if the government more surveillance. You know, what is it? Facebook now, the new Facebook app gives you per- gives Facebook the permission, whether you acknowledge it or not, to turn your microphone or camera on whenever they choose to or want to. Is really? that right? Yep. Yeah. The, the new app that you download, the new update, uh, has that in its terms of service. Yep. All right. Just give me a second. I've got to go put a pair of pants on. <laughs> 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 and I have to warn the audience listening and you guys, too. Don't be too judgmental if you're getting a visual right now. Remember, I'm in Canada. Canada's cold. That's all I'm going to say. Speaking Canadian which, bacon. <laughs> Canadian bacon. So, I was thinking so, more of shrinkage. Anyways. Yeah, I was going to say pre-cooked or cooked. Pre-cooked or cooked bacon. It's not even a sausage. It's like you flattened it bacon with Bacon bits. Iron. Bacon bits. <laughs> oh God, that's just <laughs> that's just wrong. But yeah, actually, that that fun. did want yeah. me to bring up a topic here. I don't know Please. if anybody here saw it or not. Uh, has anybody heard about this new Ukraine video that showed up, where they actually videotaped on March sixth of twenty fourteen, uh, possibly a large cigar shaped flying saucer in the Ukraine near Chernobyl. Whoa. Yeah, uh, if you want, I I posted over a link to it earlier, and funny as it is, where I found it was a very reputable source, the Huffington Post. They're very reputable. Yeah, it's not like the, the Sun. No. Yeah, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, I will take a look at Brent, that. Brent, I don't know if you could see that link or not. I yes, just I can. put it I up. Just, uh... And I don't know if, Angel, you want to actually uh, put that up on the website uh, and in the chat room for people to look at, but... I was a little bit on the...